Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be looking at the ARM load register and store register instructions, and we're going to see how they can be used to access computer memory. So ARM uses something called a load store architecture, and this means that only load and store assembly instructions are actually allowed to access memory. Now if you're familiar with Intel x86 for example, this does not have a load store architecture, so this means that a lot of different complex instructions are able to access and modify memory, but ARM is different, so it limits the ones that are allowed to access or modify memory to just a few small subset of instructions. So let's go ahead and get started and see what this looks like. So let's open up our CPU later, and I'm just going to be staying in here for this particular tutorial since this is going to be the same inside of CPU later versus inside of a regular ARM VM. And we're going to be using the debugger to be able to step through and kind of see the memory of how things are changing as we go. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to add some data to something called the data segment. So let's put this here. So we're going to call this dot data and then this is our actual segment name so it needs to be uh, named like this you see this gets highlighted as a particular keyword and what goes in here is any kind of complex data that's not going to be stored directly inside of a register so if you have like an array or a string it's all going to be stored in probably the data segment so that you can actually access this and look at longer more complex data so let's create a couple of different variables inside of here. I'm going to call my variable var1, and that's our label name. So this is our variable name, and we do this the same way we would declare a label up here. And now we need an actual type for the variable. So we're going to be looking at the word data type, which is comprised of two bytes or 16 bits. And we can declare it like this. We just do dot word. And you can see that type is highlighted again with our syntax highlighter for assembly. And we can store just some integer values in here. I'm just going to store integer five. And so now we've declared that this label var1 is pointing to this word value 5. So this is going to be pointing to the start of it. And we'll get into that a little bit when we go into array type values. Let's just go ahead and store a second variable right here, right now. We got our var1. Let's call this var2 because we are feeling very creative today. And we'll put in the value 6. So now we have a little bit of data stored in our dot data segment. And just to make sure this is clear, I'm going to add the uh, segment name right here. And this is going to be our dot text segment. So this remember is going to be any of the actual underlying code that's going to be executed on the device. So this data segment isn't going to be going to, it's not going to be storing code that's executed. That's all going to be put in the dot text segment. This is purely storing data that we need while we're executing the program. Okay, so now we have our data stored. We've clarified the difference between our segments. Let's actually look at what instruction we want to be able to use to be able to get the, this data down here. Because we can't just do something like move r0 var1. That's actually not going to work because move is not a load store type instruction. So in ARM assembly, the compiler will complain and be like, hey, you can't actually do that. So what we want to do is we want to use this instruction right here. And this LDR stands for load register. And it's actually going to take in uh, a register as an operand, and then it's going to take in uh, an area or label in memory that it's going to actually load into that register. So if we look right here, we can follow this kind of syntax right here. This is going to be our uh, destination register. And then this mess right here, which we won't get into too much about the uh, memory accesses and those different types in this tutorial, but this is going to be the source or the label that it's pulling from. Let's go over here 
the keyword or the mnemonic was LDR and then we'll add a register and then we need to actually use this syntax to be able to pull the location of this var1 variable right down here. So what this is going to do is this is actually going to put into register r0 the memory location of the beginning of this declaration right here. So this var1, so the address where this value 5 is stored in memory. So this isn't actually putting the value 5 into r0, it's storing the memory location where that 5 value is stored. So let's just run this and see and look exactly what is happening underneath. So I'm going to hit compile and load. And we'll just do, if we look at our R0 right here, it's going to be set to 0 for now. We'll do step over, and you see this has changed to the value 8. So if we step over to the memory portion of this, we can actually see what the program looks like in memory. And if you look over here, you see my values 5 and 6. And if we go back to our editor, you see 5 and 6 right here. So these are the actual locations where those variables that we declared are stored. So if you're looking at the address in memory, this is going to be 0, which is the start of the program. And then if you go over 1, this is going to be 4, address 4, pointing to the beginning right here. This is going to be address 8, because remember we're incrementing by values of 4 since we're in a 32-bit architecture at the moment. So we had 4, 8, and then 12, which would also be represented in hexadecimal. So since this is located right here, that's going to be 0, 4, 8, that memory address 8. And that's where we get the value 8 right. Whoops. I didn't even know you could do that. That's where we get the value 8 right here. So if we go back and let's say we want to actually get the value 5 and load that in a register so we can work with that. All we need to do is we need to have a secondary instruction that's going to load the value from the memory address that's currently stored into the R0 register. We can do LDR once more and then let's put that in a secondary register. Let's put that in R1. And since R0 is already loaded with the address of this variable right here, we can just use these brackets with R0 inside of here. And that, if you're familiar with C programming, think of it kind of like dereferencing the pointer, but it's checking what is the memory address that's currently in there and actually get the value that that is pointing to. So that value is gonna be loaded into R1. So let's restart and reset our registers and we'll just take a look and make sure that R1 is actually getting the value 5. Let's compile and load. It looks good. We have our two LDR instructions. Step over. Uh, our memory isn't going to be consistent every time so this address can totally change. If you look over here it's because we have our um, data shifted so that address 10 in hex is actually going to be pointing to this right here. So this will change all the time, but that's normal. And if we do one more instruction, we're expecting R1 to be loaded with the value 5 that that points to. So we'll do one more step over. And then sure enough, that value 5 from the address that R0 is pointing to actually gets loaded into our R1 register. So that was the load register instruction, and that's really useful for pulling data from memory. But what if we want to do something, manipulate it, and then store that data back into memory afterwards? We need to use something called the store instruction. So this is going to be STR stands for store register. And this is going to take in a source register and actually place a value into memory that uh, the destination register points to. So what we can do here is we'll take our str and we'll just demonstrate how that works. So I'm just going to, to make it really obvious, I'm going to use a constant value. So let's move 
into say R2, the immediate value three. And then let's say we want to put that value three into var2. So the memory location that is currently storing the value for var2, we want to replace this six with the immediate number three. What we need to do is we need to actually load the address of this var2 variable into another register so we can use that as our destination for our store instruction. So we have our move. This is going to be the value we're putting in. Let's load one more time. We'll put this into R3. And then let's take our var2 variable name right here. So now R3 is going to be pointing to the memory location where the var2 data, which is six, is going to be pointing to. Now that we have the value that we want to put in and our destination of where we want to put it. Let's actually use the store instruction to do that. So we'll do str and then this is going to be our source. So if we come over to the reference manual right here. The first register is the source register. So this has the value that we actually want to put into memory. And then the second argument is going to be the base register, so that's going to be the memory destination. So we'll put R2 as our source register, and then we're going to put our destination is R3, since that has our var2 address stored right there. So let's just see and make sure that this is actually working as expected. Let me start our registers. And let's compile and load. And this, let's just step over this. Since we kind of already know what's happening, we can see our stuff in memory. So just to prove that this memory location is actually going to be changing, let's just snip this real quick to make sure we can see like the before and after for this. So we'll do new. Just take a screenshot. See if that worked. Looks good. And let's go back to our disassembly and watch this program run. So now we're putting the value into R1. Don't really care about this. That was value five. Then we're using the move instruction to put um, the value that we want to be storing into memory into the R2 register. So that's loaded up with our immediate value now. And now we want to put the actual uh, location, the memory location of this second variable right here. So that is going to be this instruction right here. And we'll step over. So we see this R3 register just got loaded with the value 24 in hex. So that's going to be 20, then 24. So that's our 6 right there. So that looks correct since we have the value 6. And now this is going to be our store instruction. So instead of having the value 6 stored right here, we're going to expect that this is going to be replaced with the immediate value 3 that we loaded up into the other register. So let's watch that happen. Go to our disassembly. Step over. And it looks like nothing happened, but I promise if we go over to memory. Yep, sure enough, we have the value 3 right here. Just to demonstrate, this six, whoops, it's terrible. That six right there was the original value, but now we have the three that it's been updated to. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this tutorial, we took a look at the load register and store register instructions and saw how they could load and store word values from computer memory. So remember that ARM uses a load store architecture, so you can't have all of these different complex instructions actually accessing and modifying memory. You're limited to just this subset of instructions that are allowed to do so. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, and I'll catch you in the next video. Come on, you know what you want.